In honor of May the 4th, Star Wars Day, I'd like to introduce what might be called the centerpiece of my collection. But before I do that, I'll need to give you a little bit of background. As you may know, in Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt was a gigantic latex puppet with people inside of it. Unfortunately, latex is not a particularly long-lasting material, especially when used on a film set. And by the time filming was complete, it was already starting to deteriorate. Sometime later, he was apparently completely disposed of. So while the costumes for many of the characters and creatures of Star Wars are still around, Jabba the Hutt himself is unfortunately long gone. However, a few pieces did survive. John Coppinger was part of the team that created Jabba, and was responsible for sculpting Jabba at full size, based on a small maquette created by Phil Tippett. He had the presence of mind to save a piece of latex that had been created when testing the face mold for the puppet. He had originally intended to make a mold from it to preserve Jabba's face, but in the end, 25 years would pass before he was able to do anything with it. Here it is, many years later. It would eventually end up in the hands of a U.S. collector, not me, and it seems like it will be well-preserved for years to come. But while he still had the piece, John did make a fiberglass mold of the face and used it to create a handful of castings. Some were painted in a realistic style, like this one, John Coppinger is on the left, and on the right is Toby Philpot, who played Jabba's left arm and tongue in the movie. In addition to the realistic pieces, though, he also did some in cold cast aluminum for a metallic look. And that's what I'd like to introduce you to today. This John Coppinger original edition bust, or plaque if you prefer, is also called Han Solo's Revenge, since it looks a lot like Jabba has been frozen in carbonite. I got this piece directly from John about five years ago, and while it's lighter than you might expect for something five feet wide by three feet tall, it wasn't easy for him to send it from the UK to the United States. Luckily, it arrived with no problems, and it's been hanging over the fireplace in my office ever since. I normally have a number of Atticus statues displayed in front of it like this, since I think they look good with it, and I'm running critically low on space. But for now, let's just concentrate on the bust itself. It's really given me an appreciation not only for Jamba's size, which was considerable, but also for the excellent sculpting that went into creating his distinctive wrinkles, warts, and folds. It's actually kind of beautiful, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Jabba fan. But since I am a Jabba fan, having something like this that's directly tied to the original puppet from the film is quite special, especially since the original puppet is no longer with us. I contacted John just yesterday to ask if these were still available, and he said that while he does have the mold still, and could theoretically make more, he doesn't have any more available at the moment. Still, if you're really interested in getting one, you could try contacting him at his website, which I will include in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at what I consider to be the centerpiece of my collection. Thanks very much for watching.